Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. Today we're going to change things up. We're going to make these mini um, watercolor succulents. Um, these are ones that I've made in the past that I've shown on Instagram. We're going to make something similar um, that you could use for your personal use. Obviously you can't use it for commercial use, but um, it's just a fun little um, uh, watercolor idea to do while you're sitting around you're thinking about, oh, I don't know what to do. Well, let's just paint some little plants. So let's get started. Of course, I will show you how to draw it, which is so simple. The uh, aloe plant in the pot, just the pot is a line and a half circle. And the aloe is just these long, simple curved lines that connect to each other like this. And you wanna put some in between not a lot, maybe just a few. Um, the pot I made in my um, one that I just showed you was like a chinoiserie type of pattern. It's basically just blue on blue, flowers and whatnot. You just can just do little flowers. You can do polka dots, you can do stripes. You know, just it's just winging it how you like to do it. The cactus, um, similar kind of pot. You can just, cactus is a pretty easy, like you know, like that, or if you want to do the other kind that I have shown here, the connect like this, get a little crazy. Uh, sometimes I put in a, like a little succulent, um, like a rubber plant succulent. And the cactuses have like flowers on them. It's just very simple. And we'll get into all that. Okay, so let's get started. I have drawn out on my three by three inch square uh, paper. This actually is the uh, watercolor B paper that I bought at Michael's instead of the arches. I wanted to try it out. Um, it's a little cheaper. It comes in like a small sheet pack like this. I'll show you, I've opened it up, but the size of the sheets are only like this size. They're like, you know, like a seven by nine for like $13. And if you have a coupon, it's half that. There are, cotton paper too, but I'm telling you, they don't, they're not as thirsty as this guy, which is the arches. But nonetheless, it will do the job we need today. So I'm gonna zoom in. We'll start working on the aloe plant first. So we're gonna grab a brush. I'm gonna grab, of course, my Grumbacker 10. Um, you can grab a smaller brush, a nice, like this nice Princeton, uh, I'm sorry, Windsor Newton Cotman brush would be good for that. Even this tinier brush could be good for that if you can't have control, but I'm used to painting, so. This is gonna be fairly dark color. So I'm grabbing the Hooker's Green. Uh, you've seen it many times in my palette. Go over and show you this like the Hooker's Green color. It's very deep, dark. I'm just gonna go in, grab some of the paint on my brush, dab it on a paper towel, and start going in and painting the green part. So it's loose, it's not super loose, it's wet. This is something so easy you could do watching TV, sitting around if you're bored, if you want to have your girlfriends over, have some wine. Very simple. And so you get that layer, the first layer in. There will be a behind layer of the aloe. You want to go in and grab some darker of the green, adding some burnt umber to it, or even some Payne's gray to it to make it even darker, or even indigo, or even some alizarin crimson. And you can kind of dab into the bottom here where the shadow would hit from the pot. And I'm dabbing my paper towel too. And then just touching the sides with that darker paint. If it's not bleeding correctly, you can just move it around. Go back in, take off the paint off your brush, and just move it around with your brush. It doesn't have to bleed, you can just push it around with the brush on the edges. We're gonna let that one dry a little bit and we're gonna go and start to do the pot. Now for that color, I'm gonna actually for this pot, I'm gonna actually use the Grumbacker number two, the skinnier brush. 
this color I did on my original it's kind of an indigo indigo we can ultramarine is good indigo is okay it's a little darker than a shinwazi would maybe be ginger jar type coat so I'm going to use the ultramarine on this one and if I don't like it I can always add in the darker basically I'm just going to do outline the pot like so and on top here So it's a little light, so I'm going to add in a little indigo. And that might be a little too dark, so we're going to do a combination of the two. I'm going to take some of that indigo out, just by wetting my brush. It's okay if it's still there and it's dark. I'll just go and wet that. and add back in the ultramarine. So the flowers are pretty simple. I mean, you can just kind of blob them if you want, just making little like daisies if you want. It's fairly simple. These are not extravagant flowers. Using that one color You can make it darker or lighter, depending on how much water you have on your brush. And then you're adding like the stem, the leaf, over here, pulling like a flower here with the leaf, again a stem, leaves, you just kind of like doodling. Now you can go back in and add a combination of the indigo blue with this ultramarine so it's a deeper blue but not as deep as that indigo was kind of go in the middle and that's dry See, it's still a little too dark play around with it you can even add some darker elements like some dots around here change it up so while that's drying, we're going to go back in up here, add that back layer, get a fair amount of concentrated hooker's green. I'm going to go in between the ones we did earlier. I'm not going to go in between every single one, just a couple, because then it just looks fake and we're not trying to achieve that. Filling in this areas down here. I'm going to add some Peen's Gray to my Hoka's Green and make it really dark. And go in here in between the crevices. I want it a little more concentrated than that. That's a little loose. I want to have a little control over this one. Just go in and fill that in. Really simple. And if you brush the blue, I'm going to add some deeper dots going across. You can do lines. In the center of the flower, deeper color. Now we're going to let this dry and come back and do the white lines with the gouache. Okay, so the leaves are dry. I'm going to zoom in a little more. You can see I have the gouache right here on the corner. It's fairly loose, but not super loose. And you want to kind of get it on the point of that. And what we're going to just do is these little scratch lines going up and in a curve. So you're scratching, going down and up, 
scratching going down and up. It gives that appearance of the succulent. It's really simple. If you wanted your leaves to be even darker, you can do that. I'm gonna move the gouache out of the way. You, like I said, don't have to do a chinoise every pot. You can change it up, whatever you want. Stripes, polka dots, different color, different flowers. Make it unique. I mean, tutorials are nice because I'm teaching you what I know. And if you want to do something similar for, like I said, personal use, but for when you, if you're creating something that you want to sell, you're going to have to do something completely different. So you get the idea of how you can mix it up by doing that, changing the pot shape, changing the pot colors, changing the pot elements inside. And then it becomes uniquely you which is 10 times better anyway, because then you've actually created it. So look how that is so cute. There we go. And now on to the cactus. I did a lot of cactuses. If you had looked at my Instagram, they were very popular last year at this time of year. Um, I sell a lot of prints on my Etsy shop with the cactus in the red truck and the cactus in the wagon. So, Cactuses were big for me for a while. <laughs> On this one, I'm gonna change it up with colors. We're using a, zoom this out a little bit. Lime green, I got turquoise, gonna be used pink for the, for the uh, flowers, and some different greens. I got the medium green and dark green. So I'm gonna fill this in, zoom in. And each one will look a little different. I also have done cactuses where it's completely colorful. Like I said, you can go on my Instagram and you can see the colorful cactuses. They were extremely popular. I sell prints of them. For this guy, just for a simple tutorial, we're going to keep the colors easier to control. I don't want to have to have you go crazy trying to mix the purple with the green. <laughs> it's a little difficult. Gotta play around with that. So this one's gonna be, that was a limish greeny color. The first one, we'll do some medium green tones. Do the medium green tones over here. And then we'll add some darker green to highlight. Cactus. Plants and cactuses are still popular. These would be great little gifts you could give to friends who love succulents and plants. Put it in one of those tiny little frames that you see. They're everywhere, like Michael's Hobby Lobby, even Marshall's and Home Goods has tiny frames. It'd be a great gift. Who doesn't love a homemade gift? So while that's still wet, grab some of that Hooker's Green. And you can go in, you can dab the edges of the cactus. Which I've shown you many tutorials. You're just dabbing with the tip of your brush and letting it bleed into. Just dabbing the corners here. Same thing with this one. Well, it's gotten dry, so can't really dab as much. And these kind of have gotten dry too. Just put a line on the side of it, give it that shadow halo. Fairly simple. When these ones are dry, they're still a little bit wet, but. Um, you can go in and do like the lines down, which I show, showed the picture of what I had. If it's not going to bleed, 
It's more concentrated. Just put these lines straight down, curve them a little bit. It's already forming to look like a cactus. It's really simple, just putting those lines down. Gonna have to wait for those to dry, and then we can go in and add little dots to those. Do the same thing here. Okay, so while that's drying, we'll hit the pot with our design. I'm sticking still with the chinoiserie kind of feel. Of course, I'll change up the design a little bit. I'll do a second line again, but then I'm going to add kind of like a squirrel. I need to play around with this. Get in the bottom. You could do little scallops like this. Dots in between. Another line. You want to cover that. And here you can put little lines. Just make it different. Then the other one, you might want to put a line on the edges. Like so. And it's looking a little too flat. You can add some of the deeper colors, like I said, on the edges. If you hear that strange, loud noise, it's my heat. <laughs> It's a cold, damp day today. Well, actually, it's not that cold today, but the heat is so loud. Even if I did a voiceover, you'd still hear it, so there's no point. Let that dry a little bit, and I'm going to go back to the cactus part. Um, I'm going to put little dots, dark dots, concentrated of the hooker's green, or you could do indigo, which is really dark, just on this part. If you don't want to do that, you can do spikes coming out. Change it up. And we're getting even more creative. You could take out some gouache since it can go on top of that color and put some colors on there. You can do pink, green, whatever you like. And the middle part, we're just going to do, let's see if this is dry. Yeah, it's really dry. Concentrated, just dots to indicate this cactus. And this one will have the spikes coming out of it. Just take little brush strokes of the spikes on the edge like that. In a V, they're like little V's, just on the edges. You don't need to do them in the middle. People get the hint. And now we're going to add some of the the flowers on top. Clean up your brush. Pink, red, yellow, bright fuchsia. There's a crazy pink color I have. This is from the P. H. Martins. And just making little kind of like dash lines that kind of come together. Really simple. A bigger one here. And then just do some in the back like that. Leave an opening. And you could add yellow into the middle. You can do some orange ones. Change it up even more. Purple. I'm gonna add a little color to the back. And do a purple one, show you. And this guy. It's a little too deep. So we're gonna make it a little less deep. I do these little dots in the edges, make it look like they're floating petals. I'm gonna get some deep color in the bottom of that one. You don't have to do it on every single top of the cactus. I also like to do this like kind of like a rubber plant thing here and I'll just do a little line. 
just add these little kind of like circles long shapes as I got rubber plant on the side one over here in the middle it just changes it up adds more composition to the piece Put another one on the outside, just a little one. Um, on the dots, I'm gonna clean off my brush. I'm gonna add a little of the white gouache. And that changes that look on top of the dots. Gives it more of a three-dimensional kind of look. You're not covering the green, you're just leaving the green in the bottom. And then, like I said, in the middle of these flowers, clean up your brush. I'll go in and I'll add some yellow. I'm trying to get out of my yellow paint, sorry, it's taking too long. And fill it in with the yellow. And then I'm gonna go back in to my Chinois or Vase. Grab some of the darker concentrated color. Do some dots here, down here, maybe here. And there you have it. Look how cute these two little paintings are. Oops, excuse me, scroll this back. Very simple, quick and easy, like under 20 minutes, 15 minutes to do and create great little gift to give to friends who love little plants. I mean, I know the millennials are, are very into the plants, but adults are too. <laughs> well, bigger adults. I mean, they're millennials are adults, but um, it's a great little gift. I sold a lot of these um, for ornaments last year, so I know that people like them. So if you like this tutorial, please share, subscribe. Thank you so much for coming and stopping by. I appreciate all your comments and I love seeing all your um, illustrations that you're doing with my tutorials. And again, thanks for coming by. I appreciate everything. Have a great day.